Guys, welcome to a very exciting episode of TFL Talking Trucks because today we're talking about the brand new 2021 Ram TRX. And on the line, I have uh, two very special guests. Of course, uh, my co host, Roman Micah. Hey, Andre, this is probably the most exciting podcast we're doing of the century. I'm going to go there, of the century. What? Yes, okay. of the century. I was going to go with year, and then I was going to go with decade, and I said, screw it, let's just go right to century. And of course, we have uh, our very special guest for this part of the show. It's Mike Koval, the head of Ram Trucks. So, welcome, Mike. Thank you very much for having me. It's, uh, it's good to be with you. Uh, and the reason I'm so excited, of course, is because, well, you know, it's not every day a new truck is born. Uh, but it's not every day that a new truck with astounding potential to, well, beat the apex predator in a land of, let's call it, full-size, um, heavy, even heavy-duty trucks. Uh, and of course, that means we're talking about the new TRX. So I'm just going to shut up and I'm going to let you guys talk about it. Thank you for joining TFL Talking Trucks podcast. If you love pickup trucks, or big full-size SUVs. If you love trailering, towing, and going off-road, this is the right place to be. Together, we can make this podcast the most popular ever. Well, Mike, uh, uh, this truck is a halo for Ram. Is that true? Yeah, I think it's fair to say for sure. And uh, we're excited about uh, really what I would consider to be an expansion of our, of our light-duty lineup. And uh, I think it's fair to call this a halo. I think it's going to bring new people into our brand that perhaps never thought or considered Ram before. So I think it will absolutely have that kind of an impact on our showroom overall. So, so Andrew, I remember when we were at the State Fair of Texas, right? What was this, like three years ago, four years ago? 2016. Yeah, 20, 2016. 2016, and there was a truck that was covered up on stage. Yes. Uh, and, and it looked pretty bulky, and it looked pretty big, and it looked pretty mean. Uh, and then, uh, of course, the covers were pulled off. And actually, actually, the wind blew off the cover before it was unveiled. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> the wind blew off the covers. And then, lo and behold, we, we got our first glance at the uh, Ram TRX. And why don't why don't you tell them about the specs that we thought were underneath the hood for a long time, and then we'll tell you actually what is under the hood, right? Yeah, and, and it's, uh, you may recall that the uh, original concept Rebel TRX was actually based off of the Ram 1500 Classic Edition. And at that time, it was speculated, or I think we might even said that the horse expected horsepower was something in the range of 575. And as you know, in reality, we will be the first <laughs> truck maker to pound and eliminate the 700 horsepower uh, performance barrier. So... Uh, in short, everything is new about this particular truck. Uh, like a like a custom suit, this is this is tailor made uh, from the, Ram, the the all new Ram 1500. So you still get the spaciousness, the comfort, the refinement that, that the Ram 1500 is is come to know for, but with this otherworldly level level of performance, 702 horsepower, 650 pound feet of torque, numbers that just uh, frankly haven't been seen before. It's yeah, outside of like a SEMA truck, <laughs> there's nothing from any uh, manufacturer. And let's face it, that includes, we have to talk about Ford and the Raptor. That includes the Ford and the Raptor because uh, this basically bests the Raptor by, what, 252 horsepower? Am I right on that? Yeah, we uh, last we checked, they were 450. So we're 702, and they're, uh, well, they're, they're where they are. So, yeah, and um, it's, it's a crew cab truck, like you said, it's based on the brand new kind of chassis, right? Uh, the brand new Ram 1500, but it's, it seems like it's not quite a 1500. I mean, you've built up so much uh, kind of strength into this truck, including the chassis, the axles, kind of go over kind of the, the concept of it. Yeah, really, the, the only thing that's shared with the current uh, new Ram 1500 are the rails and, and, the, and the cross members. Everything else is new. It's, the, it's all high-strength steel uh, designed uh, to withstand the harshest conditions. And uh, like we talked about, this truck was, it, it was designed bolt by bolt to significantly outperform every other pickup truck in the market. All new front suspension, all new front uh, rear suspension, 
but it maintains our, our coil link rear. So you still have that, that comfort and, and, and rideability that Ram has become known for in, in the on-road environment. So uh, they thought of everything on this truck, and it is, it is the total package, guys. Can you throw out some numbers, like some specs, acceleration, etc.? Yes, uh, you know, it's the quickest, fastest, and most powerful pickup truck in the world. It does 4.50 to 60, 10.50 to 100. It does the quarter mile in 12.9 seconds at 108 miles per hour. It has a top speed of 118 miles per hour. And again, we're talking about the 6.2 liter supercharged 10 EV8. 702 horsepower, 650 pounds feet of torque, and enough memories to last a lifetime. So, uh, were, were you in the room whenever this was that, that this thing was greenlit? I would have loved to hear that conversation. Uh, can you give us a sneak yeah. peek into that? <laughs> it, it's uh, it, it's really easy, and I think about it this way: when when you're in your garage and you're and you're dreaming about what's possible, we have shattered every paradigm that anybody could ever think of when when it comes to what a pickup truck can do and can be. And so when you turn a bunch of engineers who are passionate about what we do at RAM, and, and you say, there are no limits, there are no boundaries, go build me the ultimate super truck. And, uh, and it takes on a life of its own, guys. And it is so much fun, and the passion, the creativity. And uh, look, this didn't happen in a vacuum. Clearly, it took a while to bring this to market. We've never built anything like this before. So we had to get it right. And, uh, and I will tell you, no compromises here. No, no compromises in ride, no compromises in comfort. Um, this this is the ultimate super truck. I would I would almost say you're verging on hyper truck. You know, I mean, super truck is let's say 500 horsepower, but when you, when you up it by another 50 percent, you know, you're taking it. You know, and, and what I mean by hyper in the supercar world, right? You've got like regular cars, supercars, and hyper cars. And of course, hyper cars are the ones that uh, kind of blow out the uh, current equation and completely come into something insane. Uh, and 702 horsepower to me is, is pretty insane, especially in a full-size truck. Because let's face it, to put that much power, one, one would think it'd be easy to put that much power into a truck, but it's not because uh, trucks, you know, are designed as work vehicles. Uh, and now you're basically creating something that uh, is very different from a traditional truck. We are, and at the same time, we never we didn't take our eye off of, of why people and what people do with their pickup trucks. So look, we, we are we are talking to truck owners across the country. We know that when you unpack the full size pickup truck segment, there are work trucks, there are family haulers, there are enthusiasts. With the all new Ram fifteen hundred, we, we've seen the boundaries of luxury get pushed. But with this particular truck, it's somebody who uh, it fits their lifestyle. They, they're they're adventurous. They like to have fun. Of course, they love to go off road and things like that. But they still need some of the capability. I think that Ram is known for. In this truck, you'll still have 1,310 pounds of payload capability and 8,100 pounds of towing capability. You know, you, you think about the total package here, and, and again, everything that comes with the Ram 1500 that, uh, that we know and love. So uh, it's, uh, we're, we're excited about the prospects of this vehicle in the marketplace covering a, the entire segment, not just a specific work truck or not specific, just specific to a, an enthusiast truck as well. We think this truck can appeal to the entire spectrum of, of light of light duty pickup truck buyers yeah i think you're right i think that's going to be the heart of it right because e even if you want the top dog in the full-size truck segment you're still going to want to be able to tow your boat or tow your trailer that's right you're still going to want to be able to take it to home depot and you know use it on the weekend to build that shed you're doing in the backyard so it's, it's got to be both and that can't be easy to, to put those you know imagine like a hyper car that can you know help you tow your boat it doesn't <laughs> exist <laughs> Or even a supercar, yeah. right? They're very focused on one thing, and that is, you know, going around a track fast. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and uh, but we knew this had to be something just a little bit different. And so we, we made sure that our we never lost sight of who we uh, who are what our what our buyers expect of us. What, you know, what our fans and customers come to uh, demand of, of Ram, and, and that's uh, so we, we wanted to make sure that the uh, the full package was there. Hey, Andre, we're interrupting this podcast interview with Mike for another podcast interview. <laughs> Who do we got? Well, well, we got the engineers who actually got the job done and uh, produced and designed the, the TRX. We got Jeff and Dan. Hey, guys. Nice to have you join us on this interview. And we'll be back with Mike at the end of this podcast, but it's great to see you guys. Uh, so, guys, would you introduce yourselves and would you let us know what 
part of the truck you worked on. So uh, I'm Jeff Roselli. I'm the chief engineer for the TRX. I have overall responsibility, which is both technical and also things, you know, like timing and cost, where it really all comes together. Wow. <laughs> and I'm Dan Stagner. I'm the vehicle integration responsible. Um, also kind of all, uh, all things testing, all things performance is, uh, is my bag. Cool. Hey, and Jeff, I, I, I heard uh, through the grapevine that you were on the uh, jail before. Is that right? That is correct. I've had a sordid past. Uh, I came through the Grand Cherokee SRT program uh, and then switched gears to, uh, instead of going as fast as possible, you know, finding a way to go creep as slow as possible with the Wrangler guys. Yeah. And uh, now I'm back to going fast. It's kind of a good a good fusion of my last two uh, roles. So it's, it's pretty exciting and uh, really uh Really great opportunity. All right, Jeff. So, uh, what what experience did you bring uh, from your previous, uh, you know, going fast and going slow uh, to the TRX? Definitely, um, how how to make a no compromise vehicle. You know, in the case of the Grand Cherokee, it was all about you know this this great SUV, uh, really making it as as blazingly fast. Uh, you know, and, and making it be able to turn on a dime. Um, and then in the case of the Wrangler, right, it's it's a no compromises off roader. Right? It is expected to to billy goat up any any possible obstacle it comes across, and uh, it's been really helpful with this, which is, you know, it, it's it's kind of neither here nor there, um, but it definitely takes what I would say are the the best aspects of both products, right, and, and really tries to make an all around zero compromise vehicle. Yeah, and is that hard? You know, you're living in two different ends of the spectrum, right? I mean, crawling, yeah, I mean, going fast, are, are, you know, gear ratio, suspension settings, uh, throttle position, right? I mean, everything is different. How do you how do you combine those two? No, I'll, I'll tell you, Dan, Dan and his team have found a way to do it. Uh, um, it's really I. And, I'll let Dan go into it, but I'm I'm pretty sure every day Dan wakes up and says, you know, "I'm I'm, I'm going to do this." Like there's there is no such thing as no, it, it's going to happen, you know, and and goes about his day. I, I would like to eat what he eats for breakfast because I get a little down. <laughs> like it's just, it just doesn't happen for Dan, which is great. Yeah, I mean, so Dan, let me ask you. You know, crawling and desert running are two very different things that yep. usually don't live together, right? And how did you? make those you know doable in the same vehicle i mean the the nice thing about the truck no compromises and eight drive modes right so we could you know within the constraints of the you know the art of the possible i guess um focus on on the desert running one week the next week we could be totally focused on the uh you know the low speed controllability and you know traction side of um, it's just really, you know, trying to do, uh, the best in all the different scenarios. And, uh, we took it to all the right places and had all the right team, you know, associated with it, uh, to, to get the job done. So, so, so we, if I can go for it, no, go for it. I can just elaborate on that. You know, one of the, the great things about this product too, is day one architecturally, it was set up with massive travels, um, which works regardless and you know you've you kind of heard us in the backgrounder and you'll you'll hear us continually right the damping forces um that the uh, bill stein suspension you know, allows for is is huge right? again dan talked about the different modes the the adjustability we have in those modes is, is a huge enabler. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually was my question. You know, active suspension is such a game changer. Uh, it, it allows for so much more control. So how do you guys use it? Tell me kind of how you set it up uh, so that, you know, it works both on the street, on the desert, and then rock crawling. How, and and, and why, you why Belstein? I wanted to add to that. Certainly, uh, right, we've had them on SRT products for, for, for years um, and I think probably the first interaction I ever had with you folks was again with that Grand Cherokee SRT, um, and, and that was with just their uh, 
adaptive, right, set up their, their, their early um, technology, and, and we've had really great success with them, great working relationship. And um, we've worked all along at, you know, what are new things we can do with the technology? And when it, the, the thoughts of this truck started being kicked around, it was like, hey, this is, this is it, right? This is the way we can really get in all the way, right. the latest, yeah. greatest tech, and, and really be unique. It's not the adaptation of some other manufacturer's you know, previous work with them. This is forging all new paths of, again, massive control, all of the modes, and, and we invented scenarios, right? To work control strategies around, which was which was really cool from an, from an engineering standpoint to, to have a partner that that wanted to get in and, and wanted to learn with us and really develop with us. Very cool. And then you know I'll hand it off to Dan for you know as far as the different modes technically what are what are we changing? He's, he's got the best grasp of that. I mean, the, the different modes that we have, right? We have the auto mode and the sport mode and the tow mode and, um, and Baja. You know, it's not just the suspension setting that changes, right? We have the, the, uh, the, the amount of torque split between the front and the rear. Um, <coughs> um, the, uh, the shift schedule, the... Like the damping side of things. I mean, as far as the suspension goes, you know, the Baja mode has a um, a looser on center. It doesn't uh, stiffen on turns as much. It doesn't stiffen on braking as much. It lets the front end of the vehicle uh, come up on throttle, so you can kind of you know pre-stage for your for a upcoming event. Um, you know, we have wider yaw limits in the in ESC allowing for a, a more of a two-wheel drive feel uh, in the Baja mode. Um, uh, so, so basically the active feature of the suspension, since we're talking about suspension a little bit more, so it's taking all of the inputs from all the sensors, correct? So, so yeah, there's, there's, there's four ride height sensors, one at each wheel, mm -hmm. and three accelerometers, two in the front, one in the rear, to create a, create a plane that... Uh, the control system is just always trying to, you know, keep flat, right? So it's doing what it has to do, adjusting damping on the rebound and the compression side in order to make sure that the, uh, you know, the truck stays flat. And you know, that, that brings up another question. Why did you decide to go with full-time, is it four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive? Uh, you know, I don't know what the truck, the difference <laughs> technically is, but... But, you, you know, most trucks are rear-wheel drive, and then you can switch it, obviously, to four-wheel drive. Now, why did you guys decide to go for a permanent system? I, again, I'll, I'll kind of start out and let Dan finish it off. We knew early on, uh, especially uh, with, again, yeah, starting to feel like a broken record, but the Grand Cherokee really taught us we can get um, a really true rear-drive feel but at the same time have a lot of the benefits that you get with all-wheel drive. We've had a lot of success with yaw control. And um, personally, I, I, I really like that. And, and it's come back from customers saying that, you know, they don't really want for a rear drive mode, especially this is a performance truck, but it, it's certainly not a, a track truck. Um, for, for the vast majority of how we're running this vehicle, um, it, it, it really gives us the best opportunity to, to give the customer an, a, a thrill ride, um, yeah, it's but also rude. really get traction down. Yeah, it's responsive too, right? It's, it's always varying how much uh, you know, torque is going to the front, and uh, when you need it, it's there. What's the potential split? How much can you allocate front to rear? I think our... I think our Biggest uh, split to the rear would be 80-20, or so 80, 80 to the rear, 20 to the front. Um, and I think we can go up to 50-50 with um, in some scenarios. I, th I, thought, you, the, I thought you were going to say there's no two-wheel drive mode because you would just roast them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. They're big tires, and they, they're, they're pretty... Uh, 
they got a lot of traction to them. So, so let me ask you a, another a kind of a question. So um, about related to the laws of physics, right? So you have a vehicle that's yeah. around 6,500 pounds. Uh, is that fair to say? Yep. Okay, uh, and then uh, you obviously put in a, a supercharged engine into it. Um, and then it can go, according to you guys, at 12.9 seconds, 0 to 60. No, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, 12.9 quarter mile. 12.9 quarter mile, which is, I mean, that's good for any vehicle. <laughs> yeah, let's hope. <laughs> yeah, so, so you're, I mean, you're dealing with this giant vehicle that's, that's capable of that envelope of performance. Um, so... How and you're putting some heavy duty components into it at the same time, like the rear axle, like the frame design. Talk to me a little bit more through like the chassis and how does it all work together? I guess chassis side, I'll start. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, like an, we have like an agreed dividing line of how we'll try to answer questions to start, and then we obviously we need to get into more technical details and swing either way. But um, the chassis, we touched a little bit on the background there. It is a very heavily modified Ram 1500. We start with you know, a lot of data acquisition to understand the loads going through it. Right? Um, and that kind of drives the, I'll call it the structural requirements for the frame. But at the same time, you know, the, the packaging, um, we weren't adjusting rails rail width, right? So we knew our track width was always going to get better. Track width is always better, right? I mean, it, it's it's the way to go. It's it's better for cornering. It's better for giving us the packaging space for our enormous wheel envelopes. Um, and really, so it started structural, and then we kind of went packaging, and then the capability is really what kind of finished off that footprint you were talking about. Um, the the 35-inch tire was was always a known entity, and that that absolutely kind of was the the end of the envelope. Um, we didn't want to make something that was blatantly huge, but again, we kind of had to work within that packaging constraint. And and then vertically, right, it was all about suspension travel. Uh, no, I'm going to jump in just, and, and I'm jump. Go ahead. I'm just yeah. going to jump in here before Dan. I'll let you finish because. I think a lot of guys out there are screaming, what happens if I put on a 37 <laughs> at this point? Or gals, actually. Did you guys ever tested it with bigger bigger wheels and tires? Because that's what's going to happen, right? I, I, I'm going to give it like 48 hours before somebody <laughs> uh, slaps a bigger tire. Does it fit a 37? I mean, there are packaging limitations. Um, they're, they're not unlike any other product. Right? You put a bigger tire on it, you're going to find limitations to the, the envelope, right? Um, more offset, potentially you'll be contacting sheet metal. And I mean, we, we have designed and engineered this for the 35. We know um, it is the biggest, baddest off-road vehicle on the road with that 35-inch tire. Will customers make changes? For sure. Um, <laughs> I mean, without a doubt. But we can tell you that the 35 is is a great package. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not debating that. I'm just you know I, I see what people are putting, and I'm being you know I'm being conservative <laughs> when I say 37. You know that. You, you know, <laughs> right. <laughs> you realize that. Sorry, Dan. I jumped in. Go go ahead. You're talking about the chassis. Uh, well, you know, it, it's not like we you know boiler plated everything on the on the on the frame. Like we added some gauge here and there we added you know material properties to stay efficient from a from a weight standpoint it, it's it's not you know every piece got extra metal um what is it 70 percent jeff 70 74 percent 74 percent uh is is new uh or you know modified and, and if you looked at the frame uh, and compared it to the DT frame or the base frame, I mean, it's it's got a lot of similarities. Um, we were efficient in in the design, and, and uh, you know that frame goes down. It doesn't it go down the same line, Jeff, from the uh, yeah, yeah, base yeah. DT at the at the frame manufacturer, and it goes down the same line of shaft. So you know, we had we had a lot of constraints to stay within, and, 
and not, you know, weight is not that good to add. <laughs> um, as, as long as it's efficient and adds strength and, and stiffness where so, it's needed. So is it fair to say that it's kind of a, like a almost a heavy duty truck frame as far as strength, but in a half ton package? Is that is that kind of fair to say? There are probably areas where this frame is more capable than heavy duty, and certainly areas where a heavy duty is is, is more capable. It, it, it's right. again, uh, it's all about the load direction, and, and that's right. why we do so much work up front to try and understand what those loads are. I mean, you, I, not that it's critical, but Dan, do you remember how much weight did the data acquisition truck weigh over our standard truck, right? To make sure we oh, had those yeah. down. It was it was pretty uh, serious. And, I want to um, say it was like a seventy four hundred pounder. Right. <laughs> so you can imagine yeah. the kind of weight we, the, the extreme methods we have to do to try to get a truck with that much instrumentation back down. I mean, it was, it was running without closures. It was running it almost no seats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in order to get it down to the to the real weight. All right. Let me ask you this: Did you jump it? And if so, how did it jump? <laughs> smiles. I see smiles. <laughs> it's okay, boys. You can, you can talk about it. Okay. So the answer is yes. Um. <laughs> I just assume so, but, you know, don't want to assume. We, we jumped it, and we jumped it a lot. I think somewhere Trevor's... Trevor's boss is doing a fist pump in, in some back room if he's listening to this. Uh, it was important when we did customer surveys that this truck be capable. And, and again, those those loads we talked about, that's that's what it's all about, right? We can make a truck that goes over the road, piece of cake. Um, it is really about those long travel, leave the ground events. And uh, yes, we did. And we're proud of it. Very, very proud of it. And I think you, you'll you'll see um, on Monday, right? Some of the some of the action and some of the capability of the truck that we stand very firmly behind. And how how much did you work on the exhaust note? I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> go for it, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, we let's see. We probably had. Uh, Actually, I don't know how many iterations we did have, but we initially they they offered us a a, um, a single large muffler and and no X pipe and that kind of stuff, and it's like no, no, no. It's got to have it's got to have presence. It's got to have you know the boom. I want to be able to drive it through my neighborhood and and everybody turn their heads right. Um, this is a big truck. It's got to have a note to go with it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, so, uh, and, and go ahead. It, one of the one of the struggles there, right, is that DT is the you know the Ram fifteen hundred is such a rough truck yeah. to try and make something that the customer, you know, the driver is driving it. Yeah. Find this vault like cockpit. <laughs> it's it's. You don't just you know bolt cherry bombs to the back of it. I mean, it, it, it took work to get the right, right note into the cab too, right, Dan? Right. So yeah, interior interior is very quiet. Needed to pump it in. Rep. We didn't want to. We didn't want to. You know, bake the exhaust note in the uh, in the radio. You know, or the speakers. So we had to get it the natural way. We we went for as loud as we could. Like I said, I, I think I said in the, the, the backgrounder, we over overdid it and had to back down. But in backing down, we found a really good balance. So our last yeah, iteration, yeah. or what, what's on the truck now, is a, is a really good balance for, um, you know, watt sound quality and driving down the highway sound quality is really, really quite nice. Yeah, we have this old dude, old dude who we call the magician, muffler magician, and he's really good. He <laughs> spends his whole life doing it, and he's right, you know. It's a fine line because what sounds good when you're putting around the neighborhood can get really droney when you're on the highway, right? right. And right. so you got to walk that tightrope between having it sound good, but yet then not having it be intrusive and, uh, and annoying when you're just, let's right. say, towing over multiple right. states. 
Right, right. Andre, what's next? What, 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 well, you want to work down our list? I, I wanted to learn about uh, the 702. That's the horsepower number. Uh, how, how come 702? And, and why not like 840? <laughs> <laughs> or 1,040. <laughs> no. No, but can you talk about a little bit how this engine fit into this truck and, you know, what were some of the challenges, I guess, you know, with making this power or why 702? Um, so, I mean, the, the architecture was set up for the V8, um, you know, in order to, to um, get all the travel and meet all the functional objectives. I mean, it, it was kind of a... We started with a, a base assumption: we're going to put the supercharged Hemi in there, mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't think there was any ever any discussion of whether it's a 700 horsepower version or the high output version in the in the 800 range. Um, maybe it was let's see what, <laughs> let's see how the truck does with the 700 before going any further. I mean. <clears throat> um, the, the output of the engine is obviously dictated by, you know, the induction restriction and, you know, at the induction side, we had other, other things that were important to us as well, right, with the uh, dust uh, filtration and water fording depth. And, and on the exhaust side, I mean, we, we literally have an additional four feet on any of the other SRT products, right? So, you know, with that, it's going to be a little bit more back pressure. Um, and you know the packaging environment going up and over the axle and back around the t uh, um, the uh, spare tire and everything. So it's it's kind of a you know it's it's what you get uh, balancing all of the functional objectives for the car. What's the fuel tank size? Thirty three. Yeah, I figured it needs same to be as, uh, same as the base DT. Yeah, uh, and then. Um, how about getting air into the truck? Was that difficult? I know you have a functional hood scoop, but um, was it hard getting, you know, n not just, you know, air into the truck, but enough cooling? Because that, that V8 puts out a lot of heat, not especially really towing. Um, you know, the, the nice thing about all the trucks is they've got a, they've got a lot of frontal area to work with. Um, and They are they are tall, right? This this truck is tall. It, it, we were fortunate that we really had good bones and good packaging to work with from the fifteen hundred. Um, we were excited to have this this unique airbox solution. It's we don't really have any other products that are, are meant to go at speed. Right through through dirty terrain like this. So again, we we talked earlier about the engineers being able to flex their muscle. This was one of the areas, and it, it hasn't been without headache, right? But I think at the end of the day, uh, the idea of the the split intake and, and we have a really great um, cutaway that it would be, you know, Trevor. I I don't know, you know, <laughs> where we go from a you know when the journalists would be able to see that cutaway, but this airbox, the the um, the filtration and the, I'll call it the the vortex separator, um, what it does for for dirt and grime coming through the intake paths is pretty neat. Uh, even down to how we sort of drain it away from the cleaners, um, getting that air in. I, Obviously, right? I mean, you, you've seen the setups we have in other SRTs to really, really cram it in there. Um, this one allowed us, this truck allowed us with this path to sort of steer clear of the, the normal openings we would have needed for cooling and sort of and, and pull from other areas. Um, I'm told by Trevor that there's probably a cutaway of that in your media materials when, when if you receive those. There's just there's a ton of volume to that system. And, and again, this truck is tall, which allows that packaging. So, and, it, again, you know, it was not bad, but but it was the room was there, it just had to be efficient with it. Yeah, we had to be efficient, and, and I think uh, Mark talked about the uh, 
how we opened up the letters, you know, they're outlined letters for RAM instead of being block letters. Um, we opened up the grill size and we still breathe through the, uh, the grill opening as well as the bumper opening. Um, and you'll see, um, maybe on that, uh, rolling chassis that, you know, we, we have a, a closed path to the, uh, well, engine oil cooler. The air in this, in the center of the, the bumper only goes through the air, uh, through the engine oil cooler. It doesn't go through the radiator next. It just, it goes in and then out. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have additional uh, air deflectors bringing air to the radiator and the, um, um, you know, the, the main cooling stack of radiator, uh, condenser, and uh, trans cooler and all that stuff. So, so you guys, you guys have probably done enough Jeeps to know that you know when people first start upgrading their Jeeps, um, that you know they'll do bigger tires and then they quickly find out that they also need bigger axles, right? It's everything downstream. So when you went 702 horsepower, obviously you had to have everything bigger, right? From not just drive shafts, but uh, axles, brakes, uh, brakes, half shafts, yeah, yeah, half shafts. I mean, everything had to be like like uber sized, right? XL. Was, was that difficult? Uh, I think I think if you if we put one of the one of our rear axles on your desk today, <laughs> you would you would understand. I mean, okay. if, if we've got fourteen. We still have fourteen millimeter thick forgings on the axle. I believe we do. Um, right. I mean, these things are bulletproof. Um, the you know we we talked about the full floating hubs and to you know make sure that all the loads. Uh, were supported in the right way, and we got how thick are those brake flanges? I can't remember on the on the rear axle that hold the caliper. Oh man, ten? Are they ten? They're, they're like nineteen millimeters or something. They're huge. They're bigger than anything <laughs> we've ever built. Yeah, I, and that's funny. That's 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 a, that's a really fun thing. A couple of years ago, there was a, a an off road uh, part of the local Jeep dealership, and they would actually take the uh, Hellcat engine, right, and they would. I'll stick it into a Wrangler, and I, I walked when they, I walked through their shop when they were doing it, and I was looking at the brakes, and I'm like, those are just standard, uh, you know, at that point, JK brakes. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, that can't be good, right? It's, <laughs> it's not just going; it's stopping that, all that, right? It's, it's that will have a limitation for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah the, the, you know, our 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 brakes for the the TR are kind of based on the, the 1500 RAM, with the um, with the exception of our. our Additional cheek thickness and the what do you call it? The inverted, inverted hand. Yeah. yeah. So we definitely um, for better for better cooling. So so where do you guys think once this hits? Where do you think the aftermarket will go with this? What do you think people will be doing? Have you thought about that at all? <laughs> well, I hope it's just tinting windows and, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, it won't be any time before someone puts a bigger pulley on it, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's window tint, window tint, tires, and a bigger supercharger pulley. <laughs> Hell truck sticker, so, right? Please don't try this at home. <laughs> so, uh, I, I wanted to ask, uh, just I guess maybe one of the final questions is: It seems like you know you have a big checklist, and the truck has to do everything well, right? Uh, we talked about so you have towing at eighty one hundred pounds, payload at thirteen ten. Um, you checked off the tire size thirty five inch, which I think is you know. Are you, are you, go, are, you are you referring to your uh, podcast? Uh, <laughs> that, uh, the ten things that we have to do. There it is. <laughs> uh, but when you're going slow, you can go fast. But when you're going slow, uh, once once you get hung up, uh, what about? you know, the front locker, or how, how does that, I mean, have you tested so, that capability? I mean, how does the APS system help you? Uh, is it really effective? I mean, I haven't driven it yet, but... Uh, are, are you saying you want a front locker, Andre? Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> you want the power wagon front locker? Is that what you want? Yes, I do. <laughs> it won't fit. You want, the, you, want the, you want the dispensable sway bar, too, and active suspension? You want it all. So, so let, me, let, me, let me start off the response to this one. Um, when we, uh, my, my Wrangler back in my Wrangler days, uh -huh. um, Rubicon, right, is the top dog, no doubt about it. But 
we stand by every Wrangler, right? They all get a trail rated badge. And we were very specific about making sure we took a sport on every development trip. And, you know, that sport made it through with our brake lock differential right, locker system, right? It was, it was all ABS stability control actuated. And that truck, you know, I mean, it, it the, the gesture Dan was just making, right? It can make adjustments. It can apply pressures that no, no foot pedal can. And it, it's not a locker, but we made it up the Rubicon Trail with one of those Wranglers with BLD. Um, it is an effective tool. And in a truck like this, which, again, it is focused at the high-speed running, um, it really allowed us to kind of tailor our hardware to the package and, and still check all those boxes. And I'll tell you, this truck, it will Billy go up. I mean, Dan's got some phenomenal images and videos from development trips of this thing just tiptoeing up some massive grades that it, it's impressive yeah it's really impressive well that sounds good i, I want to test it i guess uh i guess I want, <laughs> I want to put it to the test because there's always that thing where um let's say you know we've tested many trucks with open differentials in the front and let's say you have three wheels on ice and one has traction and that one front wheel can't get it. You know, and you're always like, okay, so I have this big, badass truck, but I'm embarrassed in this scenario. So, <laughs> so, so I just, I just want to avoid, uh, you know, it sounds like this truck will not be embarrassed. <laughs> no, this is, uh, I mean, I don't want to give away all our, our development secrets, but we're, we grade ourselves on that kind of thing, right? We spend time on, on, uh, grades with rollers on them so simulating ice in the hot in the hot weather right um and that's what we're that's what we're focused on we're making sure that that bld is is performing the way it should giving torque to that uh that wheel that has has grip where the others don't so we're we're uh, very aware it's important and uh, you know we're i, I think that really kind of came out of our jeep jeep team um, kind of perfecting the, you know, the traction when you don't have um, the, you know, locker type hardware. So it sounds like, and Roman, uh, I, I can see this in my head now. So you have a Hellcat engine, which is kind of a passenger car performance engine adopted to this. You got kind of a heavy duty, sometimes quality frame, heavy duty axle. You have Jeep technology. It looks like you went to. <laughs> You stopped at nothing, it sounds like, to kind of put it all together in this one package. It sounds really cool. Wait till you drive it. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it it really, really is. I mean, it, it, the, the combination of technologies and, and the go fast and go slow technologies, you know, both, both ends of the spectrum are, are pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I I think I don't know if I could share some uh, some of my favorite times in this truck have been in the sand dunes down in Glamis, California. Uh -huh. Just doing the bowl running where you kind of go up a real steep embankment, and just you know, just kind of make these big arches in the sand. It just sounds so awesome, and uh, you know, the, the the full throttle note of the Hemi just just powering through the deep sand, throwing sand everywhere, and, and it's just a, just awesome. awesome. And, and, the, and the towing ratings are also J2807 rated, correct? Correct. So, correct. Okay, and that's... I lost audio. Oh, Roman, Roman is here because he couldn't hear us. I lost audio, so I came over here. Okay. <laughs> Come on, make sure you go on social distance. Look at that, he came in with the mask on. Look at him go. <laughs> you try to be safe here. He's got a mask on. <laughs> well, well. Uh, on that note, I'll let you finish, Andre. Okay, sounds good. Um, I was just about to say because whenever you talk about an off-road truck uh, or any off-road truck, um, it's always at odds, right? You have a suspension that um, can do all the off-road goodness, right? But then you put heavy weights on it, uh, and and you know you can't really do both. 
hence, you know, rating of 8,100 pounds is a good rating. Uh, it's more than some other trucks. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, but, um, so w was that the challenge, like, as far as shock or spring rate, right? Is that oh, the deciding factor? Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, we have uh, a very light rear spring, hence the very long, uh, you know, free length of it, right, Jeff? Um, <laughs> um, it is definitely tuned for off-road. It does handle the, the towing scenarios very well. And, uh, you know, the rest of the, the whole package, right, the frame stiffness, the, the, the body mounts we tuned so that we could, you know, utilize the, the powertrain as a mass damper to take up some bumps that the suspension missed, right? Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's the real deal. It's the full package. You know, it's good on, very good on road. And uh, I guess the final question. You know, I like towing, not just going off road. But, but tell me a little bit more about the rear trailer steering assist. Um, and it basically works with no, you know, setup. Is that correct? So when you when you first get in the truck and you've got your trailer hooked up, you pull away. You make a turn, um, you know, a, basically a 90 degree turn, and it, it's looking at the front of the trailer. You mm -hmm. know, the, the rear the rear camera is looking at the front of the trailer and watching mm -hmm. how fast it reacts to your to the uh, you know the steering wheel angle. And once you've done that once, it understands the trailer. It understands it, you know it guesstimates the length or calculates the length of the trailer, and. Uh, uh, it's quite nice, you know. Just turn it the direction you want it to go, and, and give it a little throttle, and you, you got it under control. So you had that feature on other trucks in 2019 Rams, right? I mean, the length estimation, but now you added the steering capability to it. Is that correct? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I I know that. Uh, I, I I don't I don't know about the length estimation part of it. I know you can kind of. What, I thought it was like a preset. You can tell it how long it is like within ranges. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, do you, do you know that one, Jeff? I'm, I, I apologize. I, I really yeah. I'm not a towing aficionado like yourself, Andre. I apologize. Okay. Uh, sorry, I want to do it all, I guess. Uh, it, <laughs> yeah, that's nice. So, would you, I guess, final question. Would you, are you pretty happy with this truck? Would you change something else? I mean, if you could, or or is this kind of the best of the best? Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm happy with it. You happy with it? He's my boss, so we'll let him tell me. <laughs> what? The only thing he's, he's getting about is short my problem with me. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> no, honestly, this this truck, um, it has. It has kept us up at night, you know, um, but it is, every time I'm in it, there's something about it I find that I like more. Um, it is just to, to go down the road, it's awesome. You pull off the road, it's fantastic. And then you get to those instances where you can see an obstacle coming up that your brain tells you, I should probably... Oh, this is going to hurt? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and a guy like Dan is riding a shotgun and he says, accelerate. And um, the first time you hit that obstacle and, and land, you know, and it's just absolutely pillow smooth landing. I mean, it, 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 no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing. So you're saying Except you've built... I'm sorry, there, there isn't like a dark red color option. Maybe that's, maybe that's what I would change. I gotcha. Sorry, one thing. So yeah, sorry. I, I, so I just, with MD. <laughs> so Jeff, it sounds like you're saying you've built a 6,500 pound side by side. <laughs> Interesting. With better, better doors, that's for sure. Oh, better doors and better interior. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And a better appearance. <laughs> yeah. Well, Roman, and, I, I, can you hear me? I mean, are yeah, you happy man. with that? Are you happy with a 700 horsepower side by side? Uh, you know, I, let's let's just go for the you know 840. Why not? I'm mean, <laughs> gonna go swing for the fences. 
right. so I, I see Roman's shopping list is larger tires, supercharger, pulley, and window tint. I got it. And maybe maybe not quite in that order. Okay. And, and of course, you know, big ass lights, right? Because nothing says I never Look go me, off right? like big yeah. ass lights. <laughs> See, yeah, at think, Starbucks, yeah. And if Rowan could put a snorkel on it, he'll put a snorkel on it. <laughs> oh, Rowan. Well, I, don't know. I don't know how you'd put a snorkel on this one. <laughs> it doesn't like have it. to work, you understand, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this was all going so well, Roman. This was going the question so well. Is, you face it backward or forward. That's the only thing. Oh, jeez. Little, little flapper on the top. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, uh, I think we learned a lot. Um, it's really interesting. Uh, I think you're giving competition really a, a run for their money. So. Yeah, let's get back to uh, our interview uh, with... Uh, uh, Mike, because uh, I think we talked about the competition there, so um, you know, let's 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 go back to that interview. And thank you, gentlemen. Uh, you know, I hope to see you out there. Hopefully, you know, showing me and showing Andre, you know, how much fun we can have in a TRX. We'll make sure to tint the windows for you. All right, and I see the Hellcat, Hell Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> the Hell Kitty. And then Andre, are, are you, are you going to go for a four wheel burnout? Is that uh, is that? On your <laughs> yeah, I'm going to chain it to a wall and do a four-wheel. <laughs> okay. Hey, they, did it with, they did it with the Durango. I remember that. Remember? You remember? <laughs> the Durango? It was that SEMA, four-wheel burnout. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yikes. I'm getting some nods, but no, no comment. <laughs> no affirmations. <laughs> you know, actually, actually, you know what I was thinking about when you guys were talking? We just were at the drag strip with Andre. Uh, and everybody's putting Hoosiers on uh, on the Hellcats, you know. Yeah. It, it, I, I, I was thinking, I don't think anybody's done this, but it'd be fun to stick a set of Hoosiers on the thing and actually see how it does, you know. With, with you know, I, I'm sure it has a lot of traction, but I, I got to figure the unsprung weight on those wheels has got to be pretty pretty serious, uh, you know. So so maybe take them down, put some Hoosiers on it, and see if you can break into like the 11s. That'd be pretty badass. Let's do it. <laughs> Good. Maybe we will. Why not? Yeah, Why not? We'll, we'll do it. It'd be, it'd be certainly easier to launch. I'll tell you that. Guys, I, I might. I might know where there's a set of those sitting on <laughs> the engineering shelf somewhere, mounted up. On the there we go. Circle. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Right. Appreciate the time. And let's get back to uh, Michael. So, what kind of testing did you do? Let's talk about the fun part. What kind of? You know, I mean, obviously, it's it's fast in the desert. It's going to be, you know. Uh, off-road a lot. What kind of testing did you guys do? Yeah, we uh, thousands of miles of extreme testing, uh, literally weeks at a time in the Arizona desert uh, and at our proving grounds out there. Uh, we spent time uh, in the northern Michigan, the biting cold of, of northern Michigan in the wintertime, and at high elevations in Colorado as well. So we wanted to make sure that this was tested in, in all, of, all of the environments that we thought we would be using this truck in. And uh, it performed admirably well. You know, we were very, uh, very demanding of our engineers, and, and uh, because we know what what our customers will expect from us, and what this truck is going to mean to the marketplace, we couldn't leave any stone unturned. And uh, whether it's on road or off road, uh, we uh, we made sure that it's going to deliver in every environment. Have you, so you said, have you ahead. driven it also, Mike? I have, I have, I've do, I've had the chance to drive it. Uh, and some others at uh, at our Chelsea Proving Ground. So, you know, and I'll, I will just tell you from from you look at this pickup truck, and immediately the hair begins to stand up on the back of your neck. It has a striking and unmistakable stance. This this lighting signature that we have on the front of the truck is just it, it's 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 very impressive. But then when you turn that, you heard that throttle note kick in. It um, you, you 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 can't. Uh, this is true and authentic. And it's powerful, and I can't wait for you to drive it. Yeah. Speaking of that signature, I noticed it's got three little lights underneath the intake hood. Whose idea was that? Where did that come from? Well, we uh, we knew that it had to be uh, good looking, but also functional as well. So it, you know, the, those light signatures give it that distinguished part of the exterior look. But uh, but that's a functional hood scoop. It takes in about fifty percent of the airflow. The other fifty percent comes through the grill, and you'll notice that the in this particular design, the, uh, the traditional RAM letters on our grill are actually 
are, are actually floating on top of the grill and to, to allow that airflow to come in. But that other, that other vent is functional just on the top of the grill. So you actually have to 50% through the hood scoop and 50% through the grill to get all that air through. What about the interior, some of the technology that's inside the truck? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I would start with, um, you know, everything that, well, first of all, there are three different uh, equipment packages, shall we say. There are three different interiors. There's a TR package, which is your, uh, your base or your entry level, and that comes with uh, cloth and vinyl, and that interior is designed to get heat up. Um, that, that's the one that's going to get muddy and dirty and, and everything else. And then you can uh, option up to our TR1 and TR2 packages that then uh, are more in line with what uh, the limited interior would look like. So you're talking about real leather and suede, heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel. Uh, every TRX, 100% of the TRXs will come equipped with a segment disrupting 12-inch touchscreen that we've come to know and love. All TRXs will come equipped with that. Uh, but then we're introducing new features, some that are a first for FCA. Head-up display will come uh, as an option in TRX. Uh, paddle shifters for the first time ever on a Ram truck. We get paddle shifters. <laughs> we just talk about adding to that that, that excitement and enthusiasm and that, and that performance driving. Uh, we're, also, we're, we're also adding the uh, floor console shifter. We're bringing that back into Ram for the, for the first time since uh, we launched EP. Uh, and uh, the drive mode and uh, launch control will take the place of where the rotary dial is on, on today's Ram, all new Ram 1500. So, you know, the interior is going to look a bit, little bit different, but it's going to still come equipped with all of that, uh, you know, the innovation and the technology that the new Ram 1500 is known for. So, you, you said you expect new customers. I'm going to go there. Why not? Are you expecting uh, Raptor owners to trade theirs in on the TRX? Is that, is that what you were talking about? I think, I, you know, I think there's, I think there's, for sure, you know, I think there's room. We're going to grow the segment, I think, to some extent. I think that, uh, um, but yeah, there's no question that, that uh, we think that the Ford uh, owners are going to take a look at us. I don't think there's any question about that. But I think there's, there's enough space there to grow the segment. And, you know, Ram has been steadily uh, growing its um, presence as America's off-road leader. We talk about the Rebel, uh, the granddaddy of them all, the power wagon, and now you bring in the TRX into the lineup. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, think we're, um, I think we're in for a good run here, guys. So how much is this all going to cost? Because we're, we're talking about this incredible performance, but, but uh, what are we talking about as far as price? So you'll be able to get into your entry-level TRX before destination, $69,995, and then the destination is $1,695 on top of that. So currently, it's about 10K more than the base price of a Raptor, um, yeah. which is 59,000. Well, actually, it's, it's like 50, is, there, is it less than 59, Andre? You it's know 50, 56, 56, 57. The yeah. problem, of course, is that, that uh, dealers don't order those because uh, you know they don't make a lot of money on those base trucks, so you know Raptors tend to be more expensive than that when you see them on the lot. Well, yeah, yeah because I think... I was just going to simply say I, I agree with you, and I think that uh, most buyers will tend to option up those 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 packages. In our case, the TR1 and TR2 uh, just come equipped with so many different options. I think that they're going to want and, and love. So we, we do expect a a good take rate on the TR1 and TR2 packages for sure. Now, yeah. now the engine is basically um, you know a Hellcat engine, a uh, Hemi. That's right. Uh, and how did you tune it specifically for the truck? Because it's obviously a different usage, different real world. Uh, Features that it needs, you know, power yeah, it, and all that. How did you guys? How did you guys approach that? Yeah, for sure. It, 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 internally, it's effectively the same. You're absolutely right. But it, it, we did have to make some subtle tuning uh, for off-road applications, in particular. Uh, and so, as a result, we landed at a 702. But you know what? Honestly, it, it, it's, it's the first truck maker to eclipse the 700 horsepower barrier. Um, there's nothing to be ashamed of there. So. But uh, yeah, there was some tuning for sure that had to be done on that, and uh, and that's where we ended up. Several wait, wait, hold, hold on. I think you eclipsed the 500, the 600 on your way to the 700. <laughs> yes, you might have skipped a few few steps in there. <laughs> so, so there's also a, a special first edition, the launch edition, correct? Yes, and um, you know the launch edition, uh, it, we just you know, had 702 horsepower. We thought to ourselves. Why not do something a little extra special for those, you know, who have to have, you know, the, the first off the line 
uh, something that's just ultra exclusive. So of course the 702, uh, from our perspective, is fitting tribute to the 702 horsepower. So that'll be 702 here just in the U.S., okay? Uh, and those will be the first off the line. The dealers will be able to order those uh, on Tuesday, uh, right after the day after the reveal. And, uh, and, and, uh, and those will be the first off the line. And those will start right around 90000 but they're, full, they're fully loaded. And uh, it'll be distinguished by a limited edition Anvil Gray paint, which is absolutely incredible. It is, it is probably the designer's favorite color because it shows off the contour so beautifully. And you just see the athleticism and the muscularity in the metal. Uh, but that will be the only time you'll be able to get Anvil Gray. And there's also a, a limited edition um, special badge itself that'll be on the center console that'll also call out the fact that it's a special edition model. And uh, let me ask you this. Are they actually going to be numbered, or is it just going to be a special badge? It will, like, say, number 701, 702, or are you just doing, like, this is the first edition? It, 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 it'll just be, it's the latter. So okay. they, they won't be individually serialized, but it will have the van. It'll also have the, uh, the engine, the, uh, the boost. Uh, I mentioned that it'll be VIN-specific and the horsepower as well. But the launch edition will have a special look and feel to it, but they won't be uh, individually numbered per se. So uh, here in Colorado, we have a, a really good dealer we work with, um, Johnson, um, and he's just he's just great. I got to give him a shout out. We bought a number of trucks from him, and I could already uh, see me talking to him about this. And he has got to be super excited to have something like this to actually bring traffic into the uh, into the dealership floor. What, what's been the reaction to the dealers? Uh, have you talked to them about this? Have they, I mean, obviously, they know it's coming, but what have you heard? Yeah, I, uh, I, I, when we uh, when we first brought the concept, and when we teased the concept back in 2016, it broke the internet. Uh, we literally saw record levels of demand, and in fact, my web guys continue to tell me, even over the course of time, that uh, some of those teaser images were some of the most clicked on, most viewed in the history of the brand since they've been keeping track of these metrics. And uh, so we have a full 360 degree campaign to. To, to bring people through the through the funnel, but the interest has been through the roof, I, I, far beyond my wildest expectations. So we've been very thrilled, and uh, you know, look, we know we need to bring this vehicle into the market. We're looking forward to uh, to getting out there and, and bringing the truck into the communities and interacting with our fans and, and customers alike. But yeah, the the, the support, the anticipation, uh, beyond anything I could have ever expected. Any plans to go racing? I'm not going to divulge our. Uh, our, our entire suite of plans, but uh, it seems like a very logical ed- evolution for sure. So nothing to report at this particular time, but we're looking at all. That, that's, the, that's the fun part about a truck like this. It's so easy to get passionate about because it is truly otherworldly, and and, uh, and and we'll be out there. You won't miss us. We're looking at uh, all kinds of different opportunities, again, to connect with our, our fans, our customers, and then, of course, uh, in the racing space. That, that, that makes a lot of sense as well. Yeah, it certainly does. Go ahead, Andre. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment about kind of the price uh, as we're closing our this segment of our show, uh, because we, we said you know about seventy thousand dollars starting price, and maybe about ninety thousand at the top end, and but this is in line with some of the other you know supercharged vehicles that FCA has. You know, you're talking about Dodge Challenger, Dodge Charger, Durango, uh, then there's a Jeep Trackhawk. Um, so I I was pleasantly surprised when when you said the price. Uh, between 70, I mean, yes, it's a premium vehicle, premium price for a hyper truck, uh, but it's not, you know, you know, qu- quarter million dollars. It's not unattain. It doesn't feel unattainable completely. Yeah, and uh, I, uh, again, I think this truck is is um, it, it is the apex predator of the truck market. I, I uh, I'm, I'm a great product guy. I might be a poor businessman because people were expecting this truck to be well over $100,000 for this level of performance and capability. So I had to fight uh, some, of the, uh, some of the internal folks to, uh, to still, keep it, still keep it affordable. And I think, I think our fans and our customers are going to be pleasantly surprised. So are you guys going to let, let's, let's, let's look at the best case scenario. I mean, you know, uh, in the past, and I think this is not actually uh, unrealistic, right? When, when Tesla announced a the Cybertruck, they got hundreds of thousands of reservations. Uh, there's just a lot of excitement in the truck space right now, uh, and, and this, of course, is something that is um, very real because it's coming this year, right? There's a lot of new and um, different trucks coming, but they're still pretty far down the road. 
this is, you know, get it this year, December, right? Is that when it's actually going to be? Yeah, we, we actually, uh, the plan at this point in time is to uh, begin producing these early Q4 of this year with deliveries arriving before Christmas. Wow, so great thing to have under the Christmas tree <laughs> if you're lucky enough. <laughs> and, it, and it comes in flame red, which, uh, you know. <laughs> but it'd be a big-ass Christmas tree. <laughs> or, or I guess Santa could drive it, I guess. <laughs> Santa could but, drive it. But it, it's, you know, it's, it's. I guess I guess you guys got first mover advantage. That's a question. But are you are you uh, like production constrained? Let's say that you know we'll, we'll know soon enough. But uh, you know, let's say that demand is off the hook. How 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 many of these things can you build? Yeah, typically don't get into sales or production right. uh, forecast. But I will tell you, I will uh, I'll build a TRX for everybody who wants one. Okay, and where's it being built? Sterling Heights Assembly Plant. Okay, great. Right, right in Sterling Heights, Michigan. So. Yeah, it's close to home yeah. to you. <laughs> Very close to home for me, anyway. Just down the road, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and uh, I guess the last question is, um, you know, uh, was it, was it, I'm still curious about that decision, right? Because I, I suspect back in the day that must have been like Sergio in the room still, right, when this thing was greenlit. You know, and, and you, you know, you've got issues with um, cafe numbers, right? You've got issues with um, fuel prices. I mean, th th you, there's a lot of risk involved in going this, uh, you know, deep down the, the performance truck uh, road, right? Uh, and, I, and I'm just wondering if, was there a lot of, like, kickback from the business side? Because usually you look at vehicles and then the accountants say, no, you can't have that, you can't have that. But it seems like you guys went the other way. It was like... You know, green lit this, green lit that, green lit that. So, so you know, it, in a way, it was it was pretty um, unique that, that that a manufacturer would actually go down this road. A lot of aftermarket guys would go there, but for a manufacturer to, to blow through a 500, 600, 700, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, and uh, and and it's it, it was easy to get passionate about. But remember, Ram has been an innovator in in, in the propulsion space. First modern. Uh, first OEM to introduce a modern diesel uh, back in '13, if you recall, in the full size pickup segment. First to introduce mild hybridization as a standard V6 on the all-new Ram 1500 being optional on the V8. So we consider ourselves innovators in the space. And and, uh, and again, when you have an engine like that and, and a DNA collectively that we have in our house and brands, this was a fun project to be a part of. Yeah, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. But hopefully we'll, we'll at some point, you know, get behind the wheel of this thing and actually, and actually uh, you know, feel it, uh, feel it alive and kicking. It's uh, this is one of the joys of the business. When you sit in this vehicle and you fire that thing up, it takes you back to being a kid again. This, uh, the, the, if, you, if you don't, if your heart isn't absolutely pumping out of your chest when you start to, to take off in this in this machine, uh, you, you've got other problems. <laughs> Andre, any other questions? No, I'm just excited to get behind the wheel soon. <laughs> yes, we will. I promise. As soon as, as soon as it's safe to do so, of course, we'll uh, we're, we're going to bring this thing out into the community. We'll be all over. Um, and I look forward to seeing you and, and, and having you drive the truck. Sure. Yeah, thank you for taking the time to chat with us, and, and thank you for uh, uh, you know making 2020 <laughs> a lot better because it's been pretty crap so far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we uh, we're, we're glad to do it, and uh, you know it, it's uh, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to the next chapter of this uh, of this not only of this vehicle but of this brand. So thank you for having me, guys. Appreciate yep. it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike.